All right, so uh, I had the pleasure of doing this practical exercise that if you're hanging around, this was supposed to be a lunch break, but we're putting this practical exercise in here, and I had the pleasure of doing this uh, in Texas back in the summer, and it was truly the highlight of the event for me. Because you're going to be walked through, D has this amazing, amazing uh, example of setting up a lightning network. Is that, that's what they're doing, correct? You're going to love this. This is really fun, and it's going to be, if you don't know how lightning works and how the channels work and all of that, get ready because you're going to get your hands dirty, and you're going to do it for real right now with D++. Thank you so much. That's right. Uh, we're not just going to talk about education. We're going to do some education. Um, we're going to do a lightning LARP. There is no prerequisite necessary, and the only thing that you're going to need is your phone. So I'm looking for my helpers. I'm looking for the volunteers. Um, Martel Fox has some leaflets that she's going to pass out. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to siphon you guys off into two groups. The group on this side is going to receive leaflets from one color, and the group from this side is going to receive leaflets from another color. So to Martel and to my helpers, we're only going to do two colors. Right, Derek? Only two? Only two. All right. So she's going to help you get those leaflets, and what you're going to do is you are going to scan that QR code onto your phone, and we're going to get started. All right, so show of hands, how many of you have experienced running a lightning node? OK. And how many of you have never used lightning at all, ever? Yeah, a lot. OK, so not only are you going to send and receive your first lightning transactions, you are going to get an experience of managing your own lightning node today. So I'm so excited that we have a lot of people who are new to Lightning. OK, so let's talk a little bit about how Lightning works. So you may have heard that Lightning is a layer two. OK, what does that mean? Lightning is a layer two. Well, with Lightning, what we do is we craft Bitcoin transactions, and we use those transactions as payment channels. OK, so let's say that I have a channel to Martel, and Martel then has a channel to Dan. I can pay Martel through my channel to her, but I can also pay Dan by way of Martel, right? I've routed through her. Now, as you can probably imagine, you can scale this into a lightning graph, which is to say that I can reach different participants even if I only have a couple connections to a couple of other well-connected folks on the network. And those folks, by the way, we call lightning nodes. Got it? So what we're going to do today, through the power of friendship, is we're going to bootstrap a lightning graph completely on our own. Two, in fact. One over here and one over here. <laughs> Two different lightning graphs. Are you excited? OK. So if you are a lightning node runner, you may have heard of PlebNet. It's a community that we started in 2021 for Lightning Node Runners, and it quickly went viral and grew exponentially into something that looks a bit like this, where it's too big to really conceptualize on any one page. So if you get the Lightning bug and you want to continue node running, I highly recommend that you head over to plebnet.io and join us. OK. so. We kind of understand this concept of routing payments through a channel graph. Is anybody like not getting that so far? OK, so we kind of understand this concept of a channel graph. So let's say that I'm Alice, and I want to pay Bob directly through our channel. OK? Um, where it gets a little interesting is that these channels are bi-directional, meaning I can pay Bob and Bob can pay me. But in order for me to pay Bob through our payment channel, I have to have sats that I can send to him. Just because I have a channel to Bob doesn't mean that I have sendable sats, OK? Doesn't mean that I have sats that are sendable. So the channel has two sides. 
There's the Alice side, that's me, and there's the Bob side, which is the remote side. So if you've heard about channel management, one of the concepts that you may have come across is this idea of liquidity. So if I have sats that I can send over to Bob, I have local liquidity, okay? Another way of saying it is I have, you know, sendable sats, local sats. Um, I like to just say sats that I can send because local liquidity is a little verbose, right? Now, if I want to receive from Bob, I need to have remote liquidity or receivable sats, okay, in this channel. Now, in this example, I have a million sats on my side. So can I send to Bob? Yes? Can I receive from Bob? No, Bob has no sats on his side of the channel. So as we bootstrap this channel graph through opening channels to one another, you're going to see firsthand this liquidity problem. You're going to see just because you have a channel open to someone doesn't necessarily mean that you can send to them because you need to make sure that the liquidity is on the correct side of the payment channel. Now, in this example, I have what's called a balanced channel. I have sats on both sides. So can I both send and receive? That's right, OK. Now, in this example, I'm routing to Carol by way of Bob. And we have sats on both sides of both channels. So I can send to Carol, Carol can send to me. Now, in this example, OK, I can send to Bob, we have a balanced channel, but can I route to Carol? How many people vote no? I can't route to Carol because although I have sats to Bob, and although Bob has a channel to Carol, Bob doesn't have the liquidity on his side of the channel that he can route all the way to the destination. OK, does everybody have their QR code? Does anybody not have one? OK, everybody's ready to go. OK, so what you're going to do is you're going to scan this with your camera, and it's going to pull up a progressive web app in a browser. Now, I have a couple TAs, or teacher assistants. So my TAs, can you raise your hands? All right, I see Dred and Derek are not raising their hands. My TAs. So if you're stuck, you're going to find one of these lovely people to help you, OK? So from here, what you're looking at is a user interface for a Lightning node. Now, is the node actually running on your phone? How many of you vote yes? How many of you vote no? OK, so the majority of you are correct. This Lightning node is not actually running on your phone. What you're looking at is a user interface that allows you to manage a hosted node that exists on the cloud. So what we've done for you, what we've lovingly done for you last night, is we have spun up hundreds of core Lightning nodes in the cloud, such that each and every one of you has your own personal core Lightning node with experimental features flagged turned on, meaning you get access to all of the latest and greatest amazing cutting edge features of core Lightning, such as Bolt 12. Pretty exciting. And you can brag to all of your friends, by the way, that you already know how to send and receive Bolt 12 offers. So this workshop is about understanding Lightning node running, but it's also about friendship. OK? So many of you came and probably traveled across the world to come to this destination to learn about Bitcoin. But really, the main reason that you came here wasn't just to listen to speakers, right? What was the real reason you came? <laughs> to see Michael Saylor. What's the real reason that you came to the conference? Was it to sit and listen to people talk? Or was it to network with other people? So those cool people that you've been like working up the courage to go talk to, this is your excuse. Okay, this is the reason you've been waiting for to break the ice and to make some new friends. So the way this workshop is going to work is it's interactive, and you're going to be getting up on your feet, and you're going to be making new friends. So for each action on this workshop, you are going to perform it with a brand new friend. Okay? And then when you see your new friend at the bar later tonight, what are you going to do? 
you're going to buy them a drink. You're going to say, hey, you're my channel partner from the D++ LARP. Let's be best friends. And then when Bitcoin hits 5 million USD, you're never going to forget the time that you bootstrapped a channel graph with complete strangers in Madeira. OK? So to get started, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open a bunch of channels. OK, so folks on this side of the auditorium are going to open channels to one another. And folks on this side of the auditorium are going to open channels to one another. And each channel that you open is going to be to a new friend, someone that you don't know. And by the way, as you're taking the time to open the channel to the new friend, maybe say hello. Maybe ask them how their day's going. Maybe ask them something about themselves. And um, connect. <laughs> OK? So, if you only open to channels to people and you don't have anybody open channels to you, you're going to have a lot of sendable sats, but no receivable sats. You're going to have a lot of local liquidity, but no remote liquidity. So be sure to open a couple channels to folks and have a couple of folks open channels to you. Now, to open a channel, what you're going to do is you're going to click the little info icon in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, and it's going to show you a QR code. That's going to be your public key that you need for your participant to open a channel to you. Now, the way that you're going to have them open to you is by clicking the Input button, which will open up a scanner. So you scan the QR code. Now, each and every one of you has 100 million reg test Satoshis preloaded onto your wallet. Let's go. You're rich. So don't be shy. Don't be shy. When you open your channel, don't open a 100K sat channel, open like a 10 million sat channel. You have 100 million, one whole reg test Bitcoin to go around, OK? So open a couple channels to folks, have a couple folks open channels to you. And then what you're going to do, once we've bootstrapped this lightning graph, is you're then going to make yet another friend. And you're going to see if we can route payments through this graph that we've bootstrapped to people who you aren't even directly connected to. And if you can, we have successfully created a viable Lightning network on RegTest. OK? Now, you're going to learn a few things through doing this. And you're going to probably have some pain points. As I mentioned before, you're going to find that just because you have channels does not mean you can send and receive. The liquidity has to be placed in the right direction, and the routes have to exist. What you're also going to learn is when you send and receive payments using invoices, you can only pay them once, right? If I invoice you for, say, 100 cows and Satoshis, you can pay that invoice, but it's for one-time use, right? You can't keep paying it. You can't get it tattooed on your arm. Bolt 12 fixes this. So after you've sent and received a couple of Bolt 11 invoices, which are one-time use only, you're going to create a Bolt 12 offer, and you're going to send those sats over to yet another friend. Now, here's the magic. This is where you're going to have just this explosive moment. You're going to then send a Bolt 12 offer again, because they're reusable. All right? So I encourage all of you to get started, and I encourage you to get up on your feet, because you are going to be, make, be making some new friends. My TAs, raise your hands. OK, all my TAs are on this side. I might want a couple over here. <laughs> There's actually more people on this side. So if you need help, ask one of the TAs. And also, if you have something that you can share with somebody else, maybe donate your time to help someone who's new. If you guys have questions while you're do going through this, Dee and I are up here. Just shout it out. We'll try to answer it the best we can. There's. Uh, people going around, assistants trying to help you out. So, Preston, I just want to say that, like, that moment that I sent that Bolt 12 offer to you was one of the best moments of my life. <laughs> because I'd never actually done it before. Oh, really? Like, ever. No, no, no. Because even if I have all the infrastructure set up on my end to do it, yeah. not a lot of people have the ability to receive. Oh, and so okay. I don't know if you recall, but I sent the sats to you. Yeah. And then I sent sats again to the same Bolt 12 offer. Yeah. And it was it was like a peak experience and of my life. It worked the first worked. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's kind of unforgettable. 
Does anybody have any questions or having difficulties with what you're doing right now? Just raise your hand so we can kind of see right up there. Woo! Now make sure that you have your own unique QR code. Please do not share QR codes. Anyone who shared a QR code, you are going to run into problems. Now I want to shout out to Dan of BACT. He's the CPO of BACT. He helped me for hours last night apply these QR codes to these papers. It took us eight hours. I want to also shout out Jeremy of Ibex. He's the COO. He also spent hours applying these QR codes to these papers. Um, he wasn't quite as neat as Dan. I would give Dan an A. I'd give Jeremy maybe a C. Um, he was very fast, but he was not as neat. But I do appreciate both of them. So one more thing you're going to do is when you're opening your channel, be sure to input the size of the channel, right? Your payments are always going to be constrained by the upper bound of how large your channel is. Now, you have a lot of sats to spare. You have 100 million RegTet sats. So go ahead and open at least a million sat channel, maybe 10 if you're feeling generous, and then uh, send and receive some of those payments. Now, when you're ready to send and receive payments, you're going to click on the Payments button, and then you're going to create a new invoice. Once you've created the new invoice, you're going to click the input button if you are sending the payment, and you're going to scan it. Now note that you can only pay these invoices once. And once you've had the experience of paying a couple of them, you're then going to try Bolt 12 offers. Uh, I was really excited to do this practical exercise with everybody that stayed around to open their lightning channels and learn how lightning really works and get your hands dirty. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your conference here at Bitcoin Atlantis and uh, have, a, have a wonderful day and have a wonderful weekend.